So when you find out you have the MTHFR mutation, it's so easy to get lost in the sea of information and supplements out there. But how do you really know what's working? So in this video, I go into the simple but critical lab markers that you need to look at to make sure you aren't negatively affected by your MTHFR mutation. Hey, if you're new to my channel, I'm David, and I help people reclaim their lives from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. I'm a certified integrative health practitioner with the worst MTHFR gene mutation you can have, which is the homozygous C677T. In the comments below, let me know what is your MTHFR status. Don't know your MTHFR status? Not a problem. You can actually go and check out my step-by-step -step tutorial on how to find out yours. Ever since finding out that MTHFR was one of the underlying root causes of my chronic fatigue and brain fog, I've been optimizing my diet, lifestyle, and nutrition ever since. And I wanted to make sure that I never even came close to the rock bottom that I hit in 2013 and 2014. All right, so here are the key lab markers that I look at to make sure my MTHFR is in check. So the first one is homocysteine. And while homocysteine has many health implications, generally elevated homocysteine in relation to MTHFR is gonna mean that there is an issue in the conversion process from homocysteine to glutathione or methionine. And when homocysteine is elevated, um, or when it is not converting properly, it ends up building up in your cells, and that's where you run into a lot of the challenges, especially cardiovascular ones. In terms of levels, you're gonna to wanna to keep your homocysteine between a six and a nine, ideally at a seven. And even if you're at a nine, which is technically in range, it is an indication that you may wanna optimize your supplementation, diet, or nutrition in some way. A key thing to note about homocysteine is that it's always spoken about in relation to MTHFR, but it's not directly related to MTHFR. And elevated homocysteine can have other causes, such as deficiencies in vitamin B1, B2, B3, or B6. So it's important to also look at those vitamins. So if you have elevated homocysteine, but you don't have a deficiency in these vitamins, it's a good chance that there's an issue with your uh, methylation. That being said, homocysteine is always probably the first thing you wanna look at in relation to your MTHFR. So when it comes to folate, there's a couple different ways to measure folate, and there is a meaningful difference between them. So I recommend that you attack it from two angles. So first one is gonna be total folate. So that's gonna be the amount of folate in your red blood cells. And then also measuring serum folate. And serum folate is gonna usually be measuring the amount of folate that's outside of your red blood cells, which is usually going to be methylfolate or the active form of folate that your body can actually use. And if both are at optimal levels, then great. You're, that means that your uh, routine, supplement, lifestyle are currently working and you don't need to change a lot. Um, the ranges are going to differ a little bit from lab to lab. And in another video, I'm actually going to go into my specific labs and show you uh, what the ranges are for those. Find out that you do have uh, compromised folate metabolism. So if there's a high or an, let's say an optimal uh, total folate, but then a suboptimal uh, methyl folate or serum folate, you can actually do one of two things. So the first one is more obvious, which is increasing your in intake of methyl folate through either supplementation or through diet. You could check out my video on how much folate you should take uh, just to get some guidance on some starting points as well as dosing for specific conditions. So definitely check that out. The second and less common approach would actually be to increase your methyl donors. So this would be glycine and choline. And the reason for that is that when your glycine and choline are at adequate levels, you don't consume as much methyl folate. So you're gonna be conserving your methyl folate a lot better when you optimize your choline and glycine levels. So that is also uh, an alternative approach you can do. And so what does glycine do? Glycine is actually a buffer for excess methyl groups. And so you're gonna to wanna to do a lab called the Plasma Amino Acids Lab by Geneva Ion. There's also some similar ones from you know, Quest, Great Plains, ERT, and other reputable labs. Um, but this is the one that I'm most familiar with. And when you look at glycine, you're gonna to wanna to look at two markers specifically. So glycine plus sarcosine. And when it comes to the ranges, the glycine should be in the middle of the range while the sarcosine should be on the lower end of the range. If the glycine is low and the sarcosine is high, this is a really strong indication that you don't have enough methylfolate or that your uh, methylation um, has an imbalance of some kind. All right, so the next marker is gonna be glutathione. And if you've checked out my other videos, you'll know that glutathione is your, uh, your body's master antioxidant. It is the most effective and primary means through which you detoxify your body. And so one of the most important reasons you wanna look out for this is because this could be a telltale sign that you're accumulating toxins and heavy metals in your body. And then it might indicate you wanna supplement with glutathione, but it also might mean that you need to do a heavy metal detox, an intestinal cleanse, 
or a functional medicine detox. And this is great that you found this out early on because it's a lot better than dealing with the symptoms that inevitably will come down the road. Next one is malonic acid. And this one's not really looked at too much, but oftentimes if your malonic acid is high, this is gonna be an indication that you have a deficiency in B vitamins. So um, B vitamins tend to work synergistically. So if you find that this is high, you may wanna take a full spectrum methylated B vitamin, um, or you may want to look at some other uh, B vitamin levels, specifically B6 and B12 um, are the ones that I find tend to be deficient in those with MTHFR. All right, so if you have MTHFR and you're symptomatic, you absolutely must test for heavy metals. This, there's just no excuse not to test for this. And so as someone with an MTHFR gene mutation, you are more prone than other people to accumulate heavy metals in your body. And this is especially true for those of us that are homozygous because you know we um, our enzymes are compromised even more than most people usually up to 70 percent and if it turns out that you actually do have elevated heavy metals i recommend um, going on a protocol like a heavy metal detox and then and then waiting until your levels go down and for the first couple years after acclimating to your mthfr trying to find a supplement routine and a lifestyle that works for you i would test one, two, even three times a year for heavy metals, just to make sure that you don't kind of dip or there isn't something else that's contributing to that accumulation of heavy metals. Once you've stabilized and there aren't any major changes into your environment, like the city you live in, or maybe any radical dietary changes or something, then you can just test about, you know, once a year, once every two years if you're asymptomatic. All right, so the last marker is gonna be your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. I have an entire video where I go through my own labs, share with you the routine that I was on, my lifestyle, I go through my lab results, and then I tell you how I op continue to optimize my levels. So definitely check that one out. Um, but ideally, you wanna have your levels between a three to one to five to one. Um, the average American has something like an 18 to one, it's awful. And so this is not gonna be like an eminent threat per se, for someone with MTHFR, but if you are minimizing or eliminating seafood from your diet, you're on a plant-based diet, this is an important marker you wanna look at because um, it could have a lot of implications for your cardiovascular health. And we know that well, as someone with, someone with MTHFR, you're gonna be prone to elevated homocysteine as it is. So we want to make sure that we get that omega-3 or omega-6 to omega-3 ratio in that sweet spot so you aren't um, susceptible to any other risks. All right, that's it for today's video. If you got value, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, I also would love to hear, which labs have you done? What has been working for you? How have you been going about optimizing your MTHFR lifestyle? Go ahead and leave that in the comments below. And I'm gonna be doing more of these MTHFR FAQ videos. I've been getting a lot of questions about this. So if there are any other video ideas, also leave those in the comments below. And it's truly a pleasure to share this information with you. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you move through this world with ease. I will see you in the next episode.